Yo, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Native Release YouTube channel. This is episode two on learning film photography. Today we're going to be out in the field going over some of the rules that we addressed in last week's episode about metering and uh, about overexposing your film. So today when we're out in the field, what I'm going to be doing is shooting two versions of each photo, uh, the same composition, but one I'll be shooting at box speed. So if it's Portra 400, I'll be just shooting it Portra 400, metering it for Portra 400. And then I'll also be shooting a second uh, version of that photo, which will be metered uh, for a stop overexposed. So again, if it's Portra 800, for instance, I'll rate it at 400. If it's 400, I'll rate it at 200, et cetera, et cetera. So just to kind of illustrate why I personally always shoot one stop overexposed so that even when I'm metering correctly, it saves me from losing really good details in those shadows. All right, so today we're out in northwestern Montana. We're going to be taking some photos on medium format and also on 35 millimeter and testing uh, kind of some different exposures, underexposing shots and overexposing shots to see what actually works really good when you're out in the field. So as you can see with this one on the left, you have more of a green tint to it because it's underexposed. And as you can see, you look at the shadows, they're a lot darker. With this one, uh, there's a lot more light, a lot more to work with. So same thing here, you're getting that green tone on the left, which if you like that, that's cool. You can always add that in um, to your properly exposed shot. But this one, you're still gonna get more detail in the shadows. So not only are you losing detail when you underexpose, but also because it's darker in the shadows, you're getting a lot of noise. So that's gonna be these green and red pixels as you see uh, on the left image. And although you might like the color on the left image better, you can always replicate that in post on your second image, but at least it'll be better exposed and less noise. Here's another really good example. You see in the left corner, you have a lot more noise uh, than in the right. All right, so this is our final spot. Little cafe right on the side of the road. Perfect timing. The light is kind of going down, so we're gonna wait it out a little bit to try to get some better lights, try to get some purples um, in the background. Uh, the clouds are kind of covering the sun right now, but I think we're gonna be, I think we're gonna be okay. I think there's still gonna be a little bit of a glow. Again, we're still shooting a little bit of 35, a little bit of medium format, kind of mix and matching. I personally like the medium format. It gives a little bit more depth. Um, but I know a lot of you out there are shooting 35, so I'm shooting 35 as well. And the rules still apply to both. What I'm doing is when I'm coming to my subject, I'm finding a mid-tone. So right now, honestly, the mid-tone would be my hand or anything on my body right now because the mountains are still really bright because the sun is on them. So that's your highlights and then your shadows, anything that's in complete darkness. So I'm kind of metering for around here, um, sometimes kind of going back and forth to maybe a stop overexposed, a stop underexposed, depending on how different the, the light is from the mid-tone. You know, when in doubt, I really just stick to metering for the mid-tone. So I, I get my settings off that, and then I look back up at the subject, up at my framing, and I take the photo from there. And this works on medium format and 35 millimeter. It's pretty much the exact same process. And for the last example, again, more noise, you have discoloration going on, uh, and on the right, you have much more detail. All right, y'all, that's all I have for you today. Hope you guys enjoyed this field episode. Uh, if you wanna see another one of these type of episodes where we go out and we shoot photos, please drop a like and a comment below. And also don't forget to subscribe. Uh, we really appreciate all of your guys' support. Overall, we hope these teachings help you in some way to get out there and shoot more film.